Hey, what's going on with it once again, ladies and gentlemen, fanboys and fangirls especially. This is the one, the only Mr. Criticism Guy 2009, aka Nintendo Free 2011, before I begin. I know I've been on a five, maybe six days, pretty much almost a whole week of a hiatus of a, um, not making videos and shit. I have a pretty good ass explanation on that. I'm actually like um, four or five hours right now. <clears throat> I'm up. I just came back from my fam's house, you know, I'm still going to be seeing him every now and then a couple times, because sometimes I'll visit him on the weekends, something that you really don't know about me very much, but I'm not going to go too much into detail, but, um, I was actually over there, finally the roomies are all back and shit too, because one of them's kind of taking a nap, but so I could talk as loud as I want, so it's all good, so, um, I actually got some really good, um, presents this year, awesomely enough, I'm not going to really get too much into detail on that, probably on my Nintendo for 2011 channel I will, um, but the best highlights of the year, I'm not saying that all of them were crap, but one was good. This one was definitely great. I got like 40 bucks all together in gift cards and shit. It's pretty fucking awesome. 20 bucks on a subway and freaking almost $30 on this thing right here. It's 25 bucks. Jesus. God. What? That is fucking insane and badass to the fucking core right there, if I do say so myself. And uh, pretty much other than that, what else? Um, besides subway, I'm not really a huge fan of it. It's good, even though... I could talk about my GMO and shit like that, which I'm not going to get too much into because I will get into the main topic of this video as you can see at the title of above and below, which I'll get to in a second. But yeah, there's that, that, and um, I got some really cool ass axe spray and um, bodyguard shit. Awesomest fucking Christmas ever. I actually had this last year, but brand new feature I is in here. Matter of fact, I used to do this on any of my older videos. You remember, I used to do this a couple times, especially my older subs. Well, I almost got some in my eye. I was sucked ass. I got some moccasin shoes over there. I'm too lazy as fuck to go get them. And, um, <clears throat> I got some other little pajamas and shit like that, which is pretty fucking cool. You know, it's family. What can you do? Because <laughs> I'll visit them every once a week. They ain't got a lot of living there no more, though. But, that's for another story. But other than that, um, maybe if I get a thousand subs, which I doubt that'll never happen. But if it does, what else? So, like I always said on here, and I'm not going to end the video just yet. Fuck that. Um, I was going to get a Pokemon Plasma Blast 2 for my Nintendo 2011 channel. I was actually going to pick it up at Walgreens, but unfortunately, um, they ran out because I haven't been there in like four months because I usually get them like once a week or a month at Target or Walmart most of the time. Um, I don't spend anything past $20 because that's fucking ridiculous as hell. Unless it's one of those super old school base sets that are like five, seven hundred dollars for a booster box that I would love to get, but they're super expensive. So, um, then I, you know, maybe, maybe, just slightly, maybe might buy the TCG for Booster Boss, because I had them way back in the day, which I'm not going to get in the story why I don't have them anymore, but um, maybe I told you guys that before my Nintendo for Gen, I have no idea, but without further ado on that, um, now I'm rambling now, let's begin, so top 10 best, greatest, and solely and strictly my own opinion, I only did two hours of research on these Pokemon, not very much, I know, but um, I had to spend time with the fam, man, I had to, it's just, family's the most important fucking thing in the world, what can you expect, you know? There's that. Oh, and I got a new faded haircut. Really awesome shit there. You know, I haven't had one of these in a super long ass time. And, um, yeah. Other than that, uh, <clears throat> I don't know what happened there. Excuse me. Um, this is the top 10 greatest Sinnoh Pokemon of all time. So I will be doing um, Black and White, which is the Unova thing. And then the Kalos, um, the second week of, um, second week of, um, January, which is going to be the same month as my birthday. I cannot wait till that comes out, you know. Might get, get a gift or two from my roommates, who knows. So, uh, coming in at number 10, we got, um, Gabite, or Gabite. I usually call it Gabite most of the time. I never really call it like, Gabite. So, um, reasons and interests, the reason why I really like this Pokemon right here. Gabite, or Gibite, however you want to pronounce, especially in the TCG, or, like, if you watch the old school anime. Well, this was considered a new school at that time, because this is one Pokemon in the anime series that kind of lost its flair, if you get what I'm saying, because... I wasn't too crazy about it. I did like the character customization and shit. Even though Brock and Ash were pretty much the same thing. But then they brought Dawn just to fill in that gap for um, May and Misty. Which I'm not going to get too much into the anime series. But maybe in the beginning of January. Even though it'll be like 3-4 months. Because I think the Pokemon The Origin thing came out a long ass time ago. But then it was finally released and available for um for the English English dub version instead of just the subtitles. So I was able to understand it officially, officially instead of just reading down the freaking thing. Like, what's that? What are they going to say? What are they going to say? Now I know what they're going to say. And I do know a little Espanol here and there, but they're mostly in Japanese, obviously. So reasons given 
given the fact that Gabite, he wasn't really one of the first Dragon Ground type Pokemon. This is like the second time they did this with um, because in third generation, if any of you guys remember um, excluding Trap Punch because um, I actually said that before in some other person's channel and video. Um, the reason is is that um, I know you had like Vibrava and Flygon. They were the ground, first ground um, Dragon types of their time for the home region. I already covered that. If you want to check the home region out or my um, Kento and Johto ones, the top 10 best Pokemon in my opinion for those um, generations. I'll put the link down below to those um, three videos for um, Kento, Johto, and Hoenn. Now we're going on to Sinnoh. So um, another reason is I know he was I felt like he was really good in the mystery dungeon. I don't know what it is, but um, I think it was in one or two of the um, anime movies. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Another reason why Gabite looks cool is just look at that fucking interior design. Sorry about that. It's this screwy old um, desktop I got. It's like, acts real, real fucking loud. Anyways, um, I always thought he was going to be the second evolution for Sharpedo when I looked at this one in Garchomp. I'm not going to get into Mega Evolutions because um, they, those weren't introduced until the 6th generation. So, And this time right now, it doesn't count. Even though in this day and age, it does count now. I'm talking about before October and before this um, anime kind of took off a little bit. And, but for me personally, it lost its flair. Um, uh, what can I say, you know? I love those dark, ins insanely sick eyes that it has. It's, a, it's pretty much an eyes of a killer if you want to take it that far. And another really cool reason why I really like this Pokemon right here is the Sand fucking Shark Pokemon. Seriously, the Sand Shark Pokemon. That whole thing right there should just tell you how much of a threat this thing is. Especially with the... Any, any of you guys um, follow the OU battles, like any, any of the um, competitive battling metagames, this thing is a beast as fuck if it has like... Um, I'm just going out on a limb here, like um, Dragon Claw. What else is good? I know it has a Giga Impact. It was one of the first Pokemon to get Giga Impact. I think in third generation was all about superpower, and fourth gen they brought a Giga Impact. And I think that one, Gabite and Garchomp, were the first three Pokemon to get that. Funny Gibble's able to learn that shit too, but unfortunately he didn't make the list. And then last but not least, the reason why this Pokemon's boss is how is this pretty much he was even a he was in he was even a like I don't I don't even know how to say it, but he was definitely in a um, a league of his own even before Genesec had the claw things or whatever. And I know Scyther and Kabutas were one of the first Pokemon that has Scythes as hands. This one actually has like little pinchers as hands. Just like how Genesec had in the 5th generation. But it doesn't get like the... Um, and then for its arms later on when it evolves into Garchomp and then Mega Garchomp. It ends up getting like double Scythes. And of course when it's Mega Garchomp. No, I said I wasn't going to talk about him. But he has like fucking big ass fucking giant claws on that thing. Holy fucking shit. That thing could, that thing could slice an 18 wheeler in half if it wanted to. And that's the reason why um, Gabite or Gabite is my um, favorite Pokemon. So coming in real quick at number nine is we got Gliscor. I call it Gliscor. You could call it Gliscor if you want. I prefer the Gliscor terminology and pronunciation of it. So Gliscor, it's fucking app still in the way. The reason why I like Gliscor so much is because, phew, Jesus God, this thing looks like a fucking Joker on steroids. I'm not gonna lie. This thing is, in competitive battle, I know it's real good with Life Orb if you put. Or if we give it the poison heal, if we get any of those poison orbs and it gets the poison heal, that thing is a fucking wrecking machine, literally. Just like in Rocket Bell Boy, that guy on, um, was his coach, a lean, ring wrecking machine. I don't know. Lean, mean wrecking machine. That's what it was. Unfortunately, rest in peace to that dude. He's probably dead by now, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, other than that, good fucking God, man, I'm telling you. This thing is a force to be reckoned with. You know, it was one of the first Pokemon to get Gilatone. Other than that, another really cool reason why I liked it, he was one of my... Unfortunately, we didn't make it to the top 10 when he was in the Johto region. When I was talking about the top 10 best Johto Pokemon of all time, in my opinion. Solely, strictly in my opinion. Um, another reason why he was cool is he was the second evolution to Gligar. Or Gligar. Even though I did do a super rant on um, this one dude named Gligar13, didn't mean I hated it hated Gligar, I just hated that little piece of fucking troll shit. If any of you guys want to check that out, just go on my channel, you'll check that out, my backup one. Another reason why this thing is really, really fucking awesome and fucking cool is that that fucking stare in its eyes, the death ray. I'm surprised this thing didn't have me look like Golbat and Crobat did. At first, I thought this was going to be a distant cousin towards Crobat, but um, unfortunately, I was sadly mistaken, unfortunately. 
And uh, another reason why this thing is really, really balls to the wall, epically amazing in every shape, way, and form, even though it is at number eight, it's all good. I don't fucking care. He's just a freaking badass beyond comprehension. And I did say number eight. Unfortunately, um, that's wrong. It was actually number nine. So I fucked up there. <laughs> another reason why it's at number nine, the only thing that wasn't doing it for me is that it's attacks, in my opinion, they were kind of shit. Alright, I'm not going to lie. The only other thing that pissed me off about it, you couldn't evolve it regularly. You had to go into the night in Sinnoh region. You, you had to evolve it the same way Weavile did. And spoiler alert, unfortunately Weavile is not on this list. Because I put that thing on the list so many times, it's fucking ridiculous. It's like I'm married to that fucking Pokemon or something. And another reason why this thing is really, really, really cool is that, um... Not, not for the cons part, for the pros part. The thing I really liked about it, I think... Correct me if I'm wrong on this. I think it was able to learn Steel Wing. I may be wrong on it. May or may not be wrong. May be right. Who knows? Only God fucking knows. Another really, um, the only thing I didn't like about it is that, um, its speed I know is supposed to be fast, but, um, it didn't have that many good of, um, move pools at that time when it was first introduced to, um, the Pokemon series or Pokemon franchise for the Four Jones. That kind of irritated me a little bit. That rubbed me in the fucking wrong way. No, get your fucking heads out of the gutter. I don't mean it like that. The thing is, is that, um, good God. Another thing I really pissed me off about it, how in the fucking God's name did this thing not learn fly? Are you serious? Aerodactyl can learn fly. Charizard can learn fly. That's reasonable, you know? And who else? Even the fucking baby Pokemon, which are not really baby evolution, the first evolution stage Pokemon, like, um, off the top of my head, fucking Swellow, Wingle, Zatu, Natsu. Any of those Pokemon in that category, they were able to learn the HM hidden ability. Excuse me, you hidden move, fly. Why in God's green earth was this one not be able to learn fly? I guess it's a double-edged sword. In a way, I've come to comprehension. I actually talked about this with my roommates um, a couple days back before in Thanksgiving, right before I was going to go see my fam and everything. That everything has a double-edged sword, but I'm not going to get into that. Unfortunately for Gliger, or Gliscor, Gliscor, however you want to say it. Glide score, that's how I'm going to say it. <clears throat> Excuse me. The thing that did aggravate me about this, um, I guess it's a double-edged sword. It is sort of understandable why this fucker didn't get um, fly. Because in the anime, it's funny because they always contradict so many things. Just like if anyone's seen the Unova series and Fidgeon, which I'm not going to get too much into it. Spoiler alerts if you haven't seen it, just in case I do get into it. Because I tend to flip my words around. If you haven't noticed, they're caught on by it now. <laughs> um, but, um... The thing that sucks about it is that um, Iris um, and Ash, they were fighting over this Pokemon. They wanted to catch Dunsparce, and out of nowhere, boom, that fucker flies out of nowhere. Seriously. He escapes. He flees the battle. And I'm thinking to myself, and probably a lot of other Pokemon fans out there, whether you're old school like me or new school, maybe the younger generation under my age, why in the fucking hell is he able to learn, learn fly in the fucking um, anime series? But no. In the in the Pokemon game in game series, oh no, he's not able to learn fly. We didn't get we even get a Mega Evolution. Another spoiler alert: if you haven't played X and Y, even though I haven't played X and Y, most of you guys might have by now, whether you pirated it illegally or bought it. Which I'm still gonna be buying it next year. You can bet your ass on that. Is that that legendary Pokemon Zingarde? Zygarde. Most people call Zygarde. I like to call Zingarde. It's just my own personal preference, like Ungar, but. Zingarde. Um, the thing is, is that I thought he was going to be like a second evolution to Dunspar. Seriously, that the Zygarde, I'm not going to get too much into him, but I will say he looks like a freaking... Not only does he look like a Dunspar on steroids, that thing looks like a super deformed version of himself. And I'm, I'm pretty much disappointed on how Pokemon they the franchise for Game, Ser Game Freak, and I'm being dead serious. I'm not... This is no laughing matter whatsoever to any extension or any, you know pretty much any um, figment of my imagination at all, you know, seriously. For the life of I me, mean, I cannot even understand why. They should have had Dunsparce have that Pokemon Zingarde, a Mega Evolution for Dunsparce. That looks the exact same fucking thing. Even though it's Ground Dragon, but seriously, come on, Game Freak, really? You pull a fast one on me like that? Personally, that's what I think Zingarde looks like, a second evolution of Dunsparce, and I don't want to spend too much time on this. Let's get back to Gliscor. One more really quick, cool thing I did like about him, though. I think he was able to learn Iron Tail. I doubt it. And then Black and White, you were able to catch him in the wild instead of fucking doing that goddamn fucking thing where you had to evolve it at night, where you had to use the, um, 
Razor Claw. And that pissed me off so many fucking times. It literally took me almost a month because I was still going to high school at that time when this shit came out. Um, in 2007 when Diamond and Pearl before Platinum came out. That fucking irritated the shit out of me. Seriously. Come on. I'm sorry if I had to go on a rant there really quick. But that was where the cons I didn't like around, about him. There are some things I still love about him though. So coming in at number 8. I'm sorry I spent so much time on that. Glaceon. And the reason why Glaceon is on this list at number 8. I already put it at top 5 a couple times every now and then. Most of you guys already know by now. If you haven't checked out my top 10 sexiest Pokemon of all time. I know I got a lot of fucking um. What's it called? Dislikes and shit on that. I really don't fucking care. The likes I do care about, but not the dislikes. Um, it's funny, I never really put that on Disable. Because um, sometimes if I'm going to do some kind of controversial like um, video like that, I'm not going to fucking give a shit. Too bad. You don't fucking like it, tough shit. Get the fuck out, alright? That's all I'm fucking telling you, okay? You can dislike this video as many fucking times as you want. I'm still going to be fucking standing, alright? That's all I'm fucking letting you people know right now. But, um, anyways, other than that, the thing is, uh, what I love about Glaceon, pff, what's there not to love? I already said that on my top 10 sexiest Pokemon of all time, obviously. If any of you guys haven't seen the video, I'll put it down in the description box below. There are going to be a lot of links in this video. I can assure you that, my friends. And uh, I wasn't meaning to, like, scream and argue with my um, subscribers, people out there. I love every single one of you guys. You guys are awesome. You guys are what keep me motivated to keep doing videos and shit. Even though you guys are in the hundreds and stuff. It's all good. All good under the fucking hood. Because my Nintendo Free Channel has been going amazingly well. I'm almost at 280. And I'm, that's pretty much almost 25 more subscribers. And I got 300. I know that doesn't sound a lot to some people. But for me, that is a fucking milestone. And I want to thank every single one of you people. Especially the ones that are out there. That are subbed to both of my channels. In the bottom of my heart, that's fucking beautiful. And you have... My respect, my honesty, my dignity, my loyalty, and my um, perseverance. You have my complete attention and gratitude for you guys doing that. I just wanted to give you quick shout outs on that. I know I can name every single one of you, but unfortunately, um, I don't want to run out of my voice, you know? So hopefully we're on good terms with that. But uh, yeah, other than that, let's get back to Glaceon. I already talked about all the pros. I think I might have talked about its attacks, too. I know I was able to learn Iron Tail back in the day, and I know May actually had this Pokemon in third generation. And I think it was fourth gen, I don't know, because in third generation this thing didn't exist yet. And they didn't make any evolutions for third gen. You know, for first and second gen they did, you had all the evolutions. I'm not even going to name all of them, because most of you people should know what it is for the evolutions. And then uh, as far as TCG trading card game goes, I actually have a couple of them. The only two I fucking need, which I actually could get. Um, if it wasn't, like, sort of halfway broke at the moment, but as soon as I start working again on Monday, next week, because I'm asked for a week off and shit, because family's fucking important, you know? Like I said earlier. But, um, the thing is, I could go get it, see if it's still at, like, Target or Walmart with the Glaceon, like, starter pack. I know you guys don't know what that is. Pick that shit up. It's amazing as hell. I highly suggest you get it. If you're, um, if you're real rich or real poor, if you have money on the side, definitely, I suggest you buy that shit. Anyways, I'm um, getting back to my point. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the only two um, things that I knew about it after that is that it has really good attack range. The speed is fucking unpredictable as hell. Um, the perseverance that it has is cool. I guess it's sort of... I really wouldn't complain about the cons too much because there's not very many cons with this Pokemon. I, it doesn't have any double super effective things or two times to weakness, four times to weakness of anything. Only thing that's super effective on this is obviously fire types. Let's just put it out there right now. Put out the dirty laundry. <laughs> There's that, steel, fighting, and um, I think that might be it. It might be something else that I'm missing, but if you guys um, can let me know, comment down below if you can, if you even care. Or go on my Facebook and Twitter, because I always put that down in the description box below. But yeah, other than that, good fucking lord, this thing is amazing. It's a beast. It's Beauty and the Beast mixed combined. Any people should know. If any of you guys have seen my top 10 sexiest Pokemon of all time, why well, I love this thing so damn much. And uh, coming in at number 6, it should be number 10, 9, 8. Number 7, excuse me. I'm getting way too ahead of myself today. I don't know what's up with me. It's fucking Mammal Swine. And uh, hopefully you guys can see that picture. That's as far as I can zoom there. I could go deeper, but obviously that's no case in point here. 
the reason why I love Mammoth Swine so much, good fucking lord. Let's get to the pros first. Um, he was obviously in that Pokemon movie, which I completely forgot the name of, but I remember it was with, um, I think it was with Darkrai or something like that. Darkrai, Palkia, Dialga, and Giratina. I'm not sure. I could be completely wrong in it, and I think Shaman was in there too. I forgot what the movie was, unfortunately, but if I ever remember, I'll put it down in the description box below. I know it wasn't Pokemon Forever. That was way back in the second generation. The reason why this Pokemon is cool is because um, back in the day, I had a really huge love for dinosaurs in my 90s kids' days, especially in that 90s movie, if anyone remembers Disney's Dinosaurs. Way before they made that newer, like, revamp, like, repeated, remade, prequel, sequel version with that um, really awesome Colombian dude named um, Jungle Izamo. He's actually a really cool guy. If any of you guys have ever heard of this dude, he's not a YouTuber, Ozzy. He's a fucking actor. He's already surpassed YouTube fame, obviously. So definitely um, check out his movies. He's amazing as fucking out. Best actor of all fucking time. I'm not just saying that because I'm Latino myself. I tr I'm trying to be biased against blacks, whites, or Asians or anything like that, but he's just a fucking epic, awesome dude, you know? I'm not going to, you know, go off topic too much on him, but he's definitely fucking badass um he was actually a kick ass too the last time the thing that kind of pissed me off on that i'm not gonna go off topic again even though i am is that in the kick ass thing i know he gets stabbed a couple times like oh where are you man with that dude that's christopher mince the dude that was in super bad back in the day he ends up being the motherfucker in the second time after red miss the first one spoiler alerts if you haven't seen that movie and uh what else let's get back to this another reason why i like mammal swine i know he was on the uh, pokemon battle revolution I wasn't too crazy about it besides being 3D. It's just like his moose, his move pool is cool. The only thing that shit about Mammoth Swine is that it's, um, unfortunately, it's, um, <clears throat> speed is pretty fucked up. I'm not going to lie. Unfortunately, it does come to, come to terms that it's speed and the status, um, it's not that great. This thing is a tank with fucking legs. I will say that. I will give it that benefit of the tout, doubt. It's fucking amazing. I almost said trout. I don't know why the hell I said that. But yeah, other than that, sorry this thing is waving so much, but um, this thing is very, very well epic. You know, it's like it's got a tuxedo mask from the 90s anime Sailor Moon. Another cool thing about it is, is uh, it is very easy to level up on this thing, unless you end up catching a pile of swine later on in Black and White 1. I'm not sure if you were ever able to catch in Black and White 2 because I never got to play that game. But um... The only thing that sucks is that you probably have to go to a move tutor or something and wait till you get to the next level because I think it's a level 47, 49 and fifth generation. Because obviously second generation, um, um, you couldn't catch pile of swine. You were only able to get um, swine up. And third generation, you weren't able to get it at all. You were just able to get pile of swine. But with um, Coliseum and XD Gale of Darkness, I remember that shit. I remember it literally like it was yesterday. Even though it was like 2004 or 05. But yeah, other than that, <clears throat> other than that, let, give me one second. I got an important call. Okay. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen, um, fanboys and fangirls alike. Um, had to take an important call. It's actually like um, one of my boss managers in real life, so that was a crucial ass fucking call. So you could probably just skip that whole minute right there. <laughs> I don't know why in the heck they were doing that. I'm not going to get into details of why that person called me, but it was an important ass fucking thing. But yeah, let's get back to Mammoth Swine. The only two cons that pissed me off besides the speed is that um, it's endurance. It wasn't very... Um, it wasn't very popularized, unfortunately. Some people did get pissed off at this because people thought that Mammal Swine, um, excuse me, Pile of Swine was, was already as strong as it is. But to make it into a big ass fucking beast like this, some people disagreed with it. Me? I was one of the people when I was getting all the old school first and second and third gen Pokemon were getting evolutions. I thought it was fucking cool. Like, um, Togetic got Togekiss. 
Tangela got um Tangrowth. Um, who else? Electabuzz and Magmire. They obviously got Electivire and um, who else? Electivire and Magmortar. As you can see in the back, I got Magmortar and Electivire. If you can't see that in the TCG thing, so I'm pretty much a big fan of those guys. Some people hate it. I loved it. It's like how some people are um, complaining about Mega Evolutions. That's what it was right there. Mega Evolutions were a bitch for some people. For me, I thought they were awesome and epic as hell. From certain Pokemon. The only two I wasn't really crazy about was um, Mega Ampharos and uh, who else? Mega Blaziken. I'm probably going to hurt a lot of people's feelings out there, but I, I, I slowly tend to like um, warm up to them. But as for this moment, I'm just not really crazy about them. I'm just... A small, tinsy, wincy, tiny bit of me that says they're okay. And that's all I have to say about Mammoth Swine. So coming in at number, let's see, coming in at number six is Skorupi. I used to call it my personal preferences and my pronunciation of it. It's called Skorupi, not Skorupi. And um, it's funny, you'd be surprised because in real life, I'm, unfortunately, if these things existed, I probably... No offense to other Pokemon fans out there, I'd probably end up killing this thing with a big ass fucking bottle of Ray, because these things in real life would probably kill human beings in a split second, I'm not going to lie, these things probably would do that. Maybe, if they were in the world of reality, I don't know. Because unfortunately sometimes, um, I'm not going to get too much into like detail in my personal life and shit, but I will say this, I actually had to call somebody out here like, um, since I'm, I'm in a big ass fucking desert, this is pretty much nobody's business really, but um... I'm, I'm going to share it with you guys, you know, because you guys are my subscribers, you're awesome as fuck. Um, yeah, the thing is, is that, um, unless you're people that pass her by, you know, you're going to be a troll piece of shit, fuck off, alright? I had to put that out there, like I do in all my other videos. Especially if I'm doing a face-to-face -face kind of thing, you know? But, um, we actually had real-life little scorpions and shit, and, um, unfortunately, um, what's it called? Some pigeons ended up dying and stuff, we had to call it pest control or whatever, me and my roommates and shit, and I kind of sucked ass, I'm not gonna lie, that's why I barely even sleep downstairs anymore, seriously, that shit is just fucking scary as hell, you know, I'm not gonna fucking die in my sleep, especially if I'm a baby scorpion, I'm just gonna let the world, let it be known to the fucking world, so let's get to the pros on this thing, the pros, there's not very many pros, unfortunately, the two pros I can say that this thing has a good advantage of, the style and the design, they got that shit hands on, of how it's supposed to be, obviously, a lot of people saw this coming from a landslide, especially old school Pokemon fans myself. We saw this thing was going to be like a Scorpion thing. I'm not sure what the other reference is supposed to be, like Skarupi, because I was looking at the dead lang the Latin language. It was different. It's not like Spanish, but it's sort of like El Espanol, but different. For people that are extremely like into like the Princeton, Harvard University shit, so they can all go fuck off. I don't, I don't care about them. The thing is, given the fact that the matter is things bug poison, it fits the typing very well. This is the this is not the first time we had a like a dual typing evolution at that time when it came out. The thing is, is that um, it's very vulnerable to a lot of fucking things. Unfortunately, it's vulnerable to a lot of fire type attacks, attacks. Excuse me, ground types, rock types, what else? Flying types, psychic. Um, I was gonna say dark, but that's different. It's like neutral to that one. And I'm trying to think of something else. I'm psychic, you know? Not until it evolves into Drapion, which once it gets its po it gets rid of its bug typing, it ends up being poison dark instead of like bug poison. Then it becomes more of a threat, but until then he ends up being a piece of shit. I don't even know why he's on the best Pokemon of all time, but I do like the, the only reason that even saved his life for this Pokemon right here to be on this list is because of the design, the texture design. It's beautiful. I still liked it, nevertheless. And I like the funny little adorable little sound that it would make. Obviously, the girls will like this Pokemon a lot, too, because of the color. Obviously, nothing new there. I'm not trying to stereotype on females out there. I'm just saying, you know? But that's number five, I think. Is it five or six? Let's see. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. It's number six. Number five. I thought this was going to be number four, but, um... Oh, actually, excuse me. This is a number four. He's going to be number four. This one right here. Uh, Mankite. Manakite. Mantike. However you want to say it. I used to call it Manakite. Even though I was saying it wrong most of the time. I didn't give a shit. The reason why Mankite's on this list on number five is he brings me so many fucking good ass memories. Not just this Pokemon, but the other Pokemon. They had, it was the baby pre-evolution of Mantine. I know a lot of girls, will go, Pokemon fangirls, will definitely go 
think they would definitely buy a plushy thing off of this. I could see it like crazy. It was probably a lot of them that were sold worldwide besides Mew and Meryl and Pikachu. Obviously, Pikachu, in a way, he doesn't count because he's literally, he's a fucking... I would say he was a god, but even though that title belongs to Arceus and Endgame, I'm just talking about um, cultural media, you know, references and stuff. You know, you got Mario, Zelda, Link, Pikachu. He's right there in the top five, at least, of Nintendo's greatest fucking works, or just in video game history. People that never even heard about Pokemon know who Pikachu is. So I'm not really counting him on there. As far as cuteness and adorableness goes, this guy would probably be on there. Man cut it. And hopefully you guys um, don't hear any differences or anything. Sound quality is okay. But yeah, anyways, um, good fucking lord. The reason why I really like this Pokemon right here, I'm just telling you this straight for the matter of fact. Is, um, it's really fast. I think it has Swiss Swim or whatever. So that ability is really good if you use that in Rain Dance. So pretty much this thing is going to be almost outspeeding a lot of little Baby Evolution Pokemons out there. Because obviously Baby Evolutions came from 2nd Gen. We only got like 2 or 3 of them in 3rd Gen. And we got a crap ton of them in 3rd... Actually, not 3rd Gen. 4th Gen. And then 5th Gen, they just decided not to make any Pokemon that was related to the last 4th generation. And then 6th Gen, they did that again with Kalos region. So I will be getting to um, the Unova and Kalos region as soon as I'm done with this one. Another reason why this thing is there, and um, unfortunately after I got that call, this thing's probably going to be 40 or 50 minutes, so it's pretty much almost going to be an hour of me um, talking about these top 10 Pokemon. Is that, um, good lord, just look at it, you know? You can't go wrong with this cute, adorable fucking face. This thing looks like it could be no threat, but that, my friends, is where you'd be wrong. This thing has fucking Hydro Pump. This thing was able to learn Hydro Can if you get it getting like hacks into it. This thing would be fucking demolishable, literally, you know? Beyond any circumstances circumstances, you know, this thing would be a force to be fucking reckoned with. Even though it does have double super effectiveness, that's why I like to call it instead of four times weakness or two times weakness to um unfortunately um electro type moves. Nevertheless, that's the only con I have with this Pokemon. And I remember he was in the Manatee, the Manaphy movie. Um, I forgot what it was called. I remember it was in the Pokemon um, anime cartoon um, movie series. I thought that was really awesome. It had a couple cameo appearances with Manaphy. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong on this, I was going to say Pichu. But um, a lot of the water, water types like Waylord and Whalemer in that region of the home region. I thought it was cool as fuck. You know, I really love the beautiful music that they always have in the Pokemon anime movies. That's just me. So um, let's get on to number four, and hopefully you guys like number four. You guys probably already saw it already. It is Hippopowdon. And the reason why I like this Pokemon, I was actually going on Bulbapedia to see what his name actually meant. And uh, the first thing I actually saw was Don. This is like the Don of Ground-type Pokemon. Pretty much the mafioso of fucking, um, <laughs> the mafia thing of Pokemon. That's pretty much what it is. And you think that title would be like for Honchkrow. I don't know what it is. Maybe for us, the older fans, I guess it was supposed to be a joke at that time. Because I was 18 when this shit came out with the fourth generation, the in-game. I mean. And then after that, what happens is that, um, look at the fucking size of that mouth. You would not want to put your fucking head in that mouth because you'd be dead instantaneously. Just gone. Wiped out from the earth. Insane as fuck as that is. I feel like I'm a Latino and Mexican and Puerto Rican version of Steve Irwin. Like, get I, mate. Oh, ain't she a beaut. <laughs> no offense to all my Australian or Aussie UK, um, UK, um, subscribers out there. I'm just like, I'm just having a good time with it, you know? Can we just have some fun just like that Moreno dude, Rodney King, unfortunately, rest in peace to him because he died. Um, can we all just get along, you know? Seriously. But other than that, um, shh. Look at the redness in his eyes. When I actually saw the shiny sprite, this is actually the first time two hours ago when I saw the shiny sprite as I'm doing this video. That's like a brownish crap color. I wasn't too crazy about it, but at the same time, the pro to that, it looks like fucking peanut butter. I don't know why. It, peanut butter is the first thing that came to my mind, and then shit, for some reason, was the second reason that came to my mind. After you have an indige indige yeah, indigestion of... um peanut butter. <laughs> I'm just being fucking randomly stupid, alright? But other than that, um, the last thing I really like about this Pokemon, I know the slowness, the speed is not the best in the world, but sort of manageable. I think if you have Sandstream or something, or Sand Force, I think his speed's able to get raised up by two every time he attacks. So it's kind of like the speed boost version of, um, 
Yeah, speed bo speed boost version of um the flying type, bug flying type, because I think that's usually bug types that get that thing. Because I remember Ninja and Yamega were the first Pokemon to get that thing. Unfortunately, Yamega is not in this list, so sorry guys, because I know he was on a list before. I just can't think of it at the moment right now. And uh, yeah, just look at the teeth. This is just fucking epic. He didn't get that much time in the anime world, unfortunately, because I saw the minor and major appearances I had. And I'm going to go on Bulbapedia, and um, not right now, I'm here. I actually went on Bulbapedia earlier, and I'm, I'm going to put the link down below just in case you guys missed any of this information. It's a cool-ass fucking Pokemon, I'm not going to lie. And it was based on this god called Bermer Bafa Mirtha. I don't know, I'm probably saying that wrong. And of course, Bertha, that would fit the, the description. It was one of the Elite Four in Sinnoh region that had this Pokemon. And this thing was a pain in the ass for me to kill, I'm not going to lie. The highest I ever raised a Hippopotamus was level 70. That's it. And uh, coming in at number three, just a fun fact for you guys there. Carnivine. And um, I know most of you thinking, why in the fuck is Carnivine on this list, CG09? The reason, given the fact, um, excluding the fact that <clears throat> James in the fourth generation, he had Carnivine to replace his um, Weeping Bell in first and second generation, and then Cacnea in third gen. Fourth generation, Carnivine was pretty much a slapstick Pokemon. The thing is that pissed me off about it, let's just start with the cons first. He was just solely and strictly there just for slapstick comedy on an anime point perspective. That's what he was pretty much just there for. That kind of aggravated me a little bit because unfortunately um, he didn't get the credit that he deserved himself as a whole, sadly. You know, um, that irritated me a little bit, you know, I'm not going to lie. Seriously, it irritated the living bejesus out of me, you know. And if you guys heard my stump, that's just me and my foot. That's what I'm doing. That's what pissed me the fuck off on that. I really wish this thing would have had a lot of good things um, on its plate. The only, the only reason why I put this Pokemon on the list, and that's Pitch from Battle Revolution. This is actually Carnivine right here. Matter of fact, I'm going to um, go on the slideshow mode right here. There it is. That's Carnivine right there, just in case you guys had a hard time seeing it. I actually had a hard time seeing it myself, which is weird. But then again, I wear glasses, so that's pretty much no fucking surprise. Um, anyways, other than that, um, phew, good fucking Jesus in heaven. This thing was based off a of Venus flytrap. And back in the days, back in my 90s kids' days, um, even though this um, movie was a piece of shit as I grew older, but back when I was a 90s kid back in the day, I know I keep saying that a lot, referencing to that. And Batman Forever, when that piece of shit fucking sh fucking um, movie now, which George Clooney was in, and J Uma Thurman, which I had no idea she was in it until years, years later after she did Kill Bill. It was 03, 04. Well, I was like, right before I started high school, I actually found that out. I was like, what the fuck? Uma Thurman was in there as Poison Ivy back in the day? Even though they show it like, um, on the hub a couple times, but at the same time, I'm thinking to myself, Jesus freaking Christ. And there was a lot of, like, Venus Trap references in there, and that's the reason why I really liked it a lot. Plus, I was a really huge Mario fan with um, the Piranha Plants. This is the reason why he's number three. He's on my top three. He was, like, my fucking baby at that time. Uh, the highest I ever really raised a Carnivine was level 50. Because, unfortunately, his move pool with his move sets was really fucking shit. Straight up puta fucking mierda fucking shit. That's how bad it is, you know? And sad to see that this Pokemon didn't get a lot of um, play value, you know, playback value. And uh, I was sad to see it go. So in a way, rest in peace to Carnivine because he didn't get the credit and attention that he so desperately fucking deserved. Really. But uh, other than that, the only good thing that I really did like about him besides uh, Venus Flytraps and all that good shit like Mario and Batman Beyond references is that um, look at the freaking jaws in this thing. Jesus, God. Imagine you get your fucking hand caught in there, it's pretty much going to get cut clean. Pretty much like a butcher meat market or something. That's why this thing would be super dangerous if it was real. But uh, coming in at number two and one, two is probably going to be a lot of people's like, um, what the fuck moments, are you serious? And that is this really awesome DVNR version of um, Vespa Queen. Vespa Queen, Vespa Queen, I usually call it Vespa Queen. But I like calling it Vespa Queen too, I like pronouncing both ways. I'm surprised this wasn't on my top 10 sexiest Pokemon while I was doing that because I was pretty much, um, I was really fucking shit-faced when I did that thing. I'm not going to lie to you guys, you know? I was out of my mind when I did that. I already know the repercussions that were going to come through that video, but fuck it. I didn't care. As I don't care now. 
But I do care about this list, nevertheless. It is solely and strictly my opinion. I gotta keep saying that so that way some of these dumbass trolls can get it. But as far as my subscribers and main viewers, you guys are awesomely epic. And uh, the thing I really liked about Vespa Queen, obviously, was the queen bitch in charge of Pokemon in fourth generation. And a uh, funny discovery, I should have seen this sooner than later, that um, when I was looking at Bulbapedia, once again, all the credit, credibility definitely goes to Bulbapedia. And then a couple other sites like Serebi and um, Pokebeach, but they don't, um, they don't give you as much information as Bulbapedia does. That's why I like going on there a lot more. And then Sidepoke, they don't really do nothing on that site no more. Just a little heads up if you're going over there. Unless you're still kept, still collecting the TCG packs or just barely getting into it like I did almost four years ago back in 2011. Because the last time, back in my early 2000s kids days, I was like 13 the last time I collected Pokemon cards. <laughs> and that's way before I ended up moving out here to 702. Actually, a month or two before that. But, uh, yeah, another reason why I really like this Pokemon, you know, I would have said Sex Appeal, but what the fuck ever. That's too late for that now, unfortunately. Unless I do another revamp of that, even though I'll have more repercussions on that, I really don't give a fucking shit. But uh, like I always said on there, I like the little gem on its head. I don't know what it was. It brought me some vibes from Sonic the Hedgehog. When I first saw Vespa Queen, I don't know what it is, but besides it bringing vibes like Dr. Eggman's like robots and stuff like that, it was kind of like a boss enemy for like Sonic the Hedgehog. That's the kind of like momentum I was feeling. These these sort of feelings to this Pokemon. Even though it would be extremely dangerous. <laughs> I know most of you are going to laugh at me when I say this. But if this thing was real, like, as far as the sexual reproductive organ systems go, it would be extremely dangerous to have this Pokemon as, like, with compared, like, paired up with another male Pokemon, this thing would probably get its penis sliced off fast, that quick. Seriously, I'm not even going to lie. Um, if any of you guys are... <laughs> You could be immature about it if you want, but seriously, just think about that for a second. Let that sink, marinate within your mind. Seriously. That shit would be fucking dangerous. I would, even if Pokemon was real and I was a male Pokemon, I would not fucking hit that. Seriously, it would not even be, what's it called? It wouldn't, it wouldn't even be a matter of fact question. It would be a matter of, you know, like, I'm trying to remember the word for it. Instincts. That's what it is. You know? The only other two things I liked about this Pokemon, it had three actual signature moves, which was Heal Order, Attack Order, and Defense Order. And it was funny because those moves were really fucking shit. The only move I really liked from that moveset, as far as the adventure mode, excluding the metagames, is um, Power Gem. The reason why I like Power Gem a lot is that Power Gem, I packed a fucking punch. I know the only two other Pokemon I knew that was a lot of rock type Pokemon, and Persian. I don't know what it was that Persian was able to learn, maybe because it had the gem in the forehead or something. Somebody explained that to me? I don't know. The only con that really pissed me off about this Pokemon was double super effective against um, rock types, which pissed me off a lot because back in my 90s kids days of first generation before the second one came out, shortly after, which was about a year or two later, um, I think Beedrill was the only one that was like um, the bug flying type besides Butterfree, you know? And then uh, you had Venabon too, but then that thing ended up being Poison bug instead of um bug flying it threw me off a little bit back in the day i don't know why and um what's it called them rock types were actually my more number one favorite type before steel type i ended up taking a number one all the way up to this very moment in time right before 2014 which is going to be on uh, next week thursday it's crazy as fuck to believe anyways um other than that that's pretty much all i had to say about vespa queen then she's really crazy ass fucking diva that's all i'm gonna say and uh, I know I saw a lot of Combi in the anime too. Don't get me wrong on that. Then number one is hopefully you can see that Toxic Rogue there. If not, definitely check this fucker out. I'm telling you right now. Let's see if I can find him. Bam, Toxic Rogue. The reason why I love Toxic Rogue so much and that named it, and that it made it to my number one list is that number one. It's a fucking one of the very first Pokemon that was poison fighting, dual typing ever. The male and the female version was fucking cool. The female, I think it had like a smaller throat, and then the male had a big ass fucking like croak. You know? It's funny how Brock's Pokemon Krogunk, it never evolved into like a um, Toxic Croak, unless it did. And I missed an episode on it. You can spoiler alert me as much as you want with it. All spoiler alerts on my channel are fucking welcome. I love it. I'm not like some other people. It's like, oh no, spoiler alerts. Don't do it. You know? I want them. 
You know, that's how I want it. Have it my fucking way. And say make it easy. <laughs> but yeah, that shit was corny, you know. The reason why Toxic Croak is at number one. This thing had so many major appearances. It's not even funny. TCG game, that thing was cool. I know I have it in the Boundaries Cross up. Really awesome for the trading card game. I love every single moment of it. Sometimes I'll put it in at number one just in case any of you guys like that shit. And it like it is now. <clears throat> Yellow eyes are scary as fuck. One of the first Pokemon to get X Scissor and um, Cross Poison attacks. If any of you guys don't know what that is, definitely go on um, Bulbapedia and check that shit out because that's where I got most of the information from. Shout out goes to Bulbapedia. I cannot think of them enough. Shout out, shout out, shout out to their channel. Not channel. Their website. I don't know if they had a YouTube channel. That'd be cool. But, uh, yeah, the only two things I can say about it as far as its cons go, um, let's see, um, design-wise, it wasn't that cool looking, but in the TCG art packs, those things were boss as fuck, I'm not gonna lie. This thing took a whole new other level thing. And since me, since I'm half Puerto Rican and shit, we have, like, this, like, little poisonous, like, um, frog thing that actually represents the country over there, the Boricuas and all that shit, even though we have a toucan, but the other thing of representation is that number one it's kind of like a cultural aspect like a a, ho a homage if you will to like my other half my puerto rican side even though i'm mexican but i still got the puerto rican side it's awesome as hell that's why he's at number one i'm sorry if i was biased on that on my race ethnicity but i just love this shit it's fucking awesome i love all the food and everything you know the beautiful women the freaking island the cultural life the aspect i really lo fucking want to go there one day i seriously fucking do I'm fortunate out of a million dollars, so I can't do that. Hopefully one day, if it ever happens, though, I'm so going to PR. No fucking doubt. And every of my other my Hispanics that are really passionate about that, you know, fucking Boricua, stand up, you know? Um, viva, le, viva de mi gente. That's what it is, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's if you're main comment, you know? But uh, sorry for all the black, white, and Asian people if you don't understand it. Unless you're mixed with a little bit of Spanish. Hey, by all means, you're awesome as fuck, too. As a person and as a whole, you know, I still love you guys. No homo, of course. Unless you're a female, then that's cool. But that's pretty much the only reason why I like Toxic Pro. So hopefully, unfortunately, there's no, um, this this video was already dragging off 50, 55 minutes probably. I could be completely wrong. There is no, um, honorable mention in this one. So I'm not going to put any honorable mentions because it'll be, the video will drag way too long as it is right now. And that's pretty much all I have to say. So like I always do say, is what it is, ain't what it ain't. See you when I see you guys. Have a good day. Have a good night. Work out around the world. Don't drink smoke weed at the same time. Don't do anything reckless. See you soon. See you around. Peace out. Lates. Goodbye. I am gone. I am getting the fuck out of here. And um, you guys have a happy New Year's Eve. Hopefully Christmas was a good time for you. New Year's Eve, New Year's Day was good for you. And um, yeah, that's all I got to say. I'm gone. I'm out. And uh, be safe. Be easy. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.